G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in today's video I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on what happened last week with uh, the tread spawning and my ventralis female. And I thought I'd run you through some of the changes that I made with the fish room. Some changes in fish food as well as additives that I add to the water. So if you didn't catch last week's video, you can watch it right here where I discussed my fishing tour for July 2020 and I showed you guys my ventralis males and the spawning activity that they have with my ventralis female as well as the spawning activity of my Neorecolagus tetracephalus. So why don't we get straight into it with today's update. So I've just come home from work and I can see five of the Neotrep eggs wriggling. Hopefully you can see that on the screen, some of the white dots wriggling if I can hold my camera steady for long enough. About to get them out, try this all over again and put them in the egg tumbler. Expect some more will hatch over the next few hours. And I actually think that some have hatched during the day while I was at work, unfortunately, so I'm not sure where they've gone. If the males placed them somewhere else in the tank, maybe deeper into the cave, but I'm gonna try and save what I can. So I'll put them in the egg tumbler now and I'll show you what they look like once they're in there. You can see the eggs wriggling away there, newly hatched neotret fry. Let's hope that these guys survive. I have some brine shrimp eggs on the way. Hopefully we'll help them grow, change the process up a little bit this time and let them out as soon as they're free swimming into this tank. Okay guys, and as you can see, here are the Tretrocephalus fry in the little leg tumbler. They're developing and absorbing their yolk sac. So they're still using their sticky glands that they have on their head to attach themselves to the pantyhose so they, don't, they aren't getting blown around. Here they're about three or four days old and I suspect they've got about another three or four days before they fully develop that yolk sac and become free swimming. But yeah, there you go guys, that's the update with my trek fry. And guys, here's a little bit of a behind the scenes look of what I've had to do to rig up my DSLR to get some nice clear images for you guys. So you can see the back of the camera, live view on the fry, the fry in the tank there, and the egg tumbler. And here is how sketchy <laughs> my DSLR camera rig is right now. So you got two legs on my big step ladder and one leg on my smaller ladder. Pretty sketchy, but it is pretty secure as well. I thought I'd show you guys so you can see what it looked like. It's not easy to get nice clear images of those guys in, in that position because the tank is up so high, but this does the job. And the other little update is that my ventralis female has spat out her fry finally after pretty much a month of not eating, a little over a month. And I have six ventralis fry in the tank now. So I've come home from work. First thing I notice is that she spat these guys out, put the four foot tank light on, notice that the neotrets that their eggs had hatched. So a busy afternoon in the fish room. There she is. She's had her first feed, her first proper feed. Some nice adult brine shrimp for her, but she's doing all right for holding six babies in her mouth for a month and not eating that entire time, apart from the occasional feeding of baby brine shrimp. Hey guys, I just want to point out that I'm not sponsored by any company in running this fish room. All the decisions that I make in running the fish room are made solely by me. That includes things like buying additives, the fish food I feed, and the equipment that I buy. All those decisions are made solely by me on the research that I do and the customer feedback that I read up about. So, just want to make that clear. If in the future I do become sponsored, I will fully disclose that to you guys and I will make honest reviews and give you honest feedback on what I think about those companies' products. But I will fully disclose that to you guys beforehand. And the reason I bring that up is because I've received some emails from subscribers who have told me that they've purchased products based on my opinions and videos that I've made. And while I find that flattering, I just I am realising now that even though I have a small subscriber base, that I do influence you guys. So I just wanted to disclose that to you. But I just don't want you guys to take only my word as gospel. I want you guys to do your own research and see what other people say. See what other people's opinions are of the same product. Maybe their reasoning might sway you another way in not purchasing something or purchasing something. So I just really want to stress that out. Don't take my word solely as gospel. Do your own research and see what suits your specific requirements. And the reason I say that is because, let's take the additives for example that I use in this fish room. Secret products. I 
I've mentioned them a lot in my in-depth species profiles. And by the way, if you haven't seen those videos, you can watch the full playlist right here. I mention Seekin products a lot in those videos. And I use Seekin products basically because I need a higher pH and harder water. The water that I have straight out of the tap is a low pH and is soft. So these Tanganyikan cichlids need high pH, the highest pH of all the African cichlids, of all cichlids in the world. But my point is, my situation, my tap water comes out of the tap at a pH of around 7.4. Some people might find that suitable for their fish in their situation. I want to run them at a high pH. Also, the main reason though, is that my water is soft straight out of the tap. It sits at around a DKH of around three. Very, very soft. And these guys require hard water. They require a lot of mineralization in the water. So, elements in the water that make the water hard. So I started using Seekin products, and I mentioned those products in my videos. So guys, here are the products, okay? The Tanganyika buffer and the Seekin Lake Salt. These are one kilo tubs. Each costs around $40 to $50 on eBay. Now I have about 2,000 litres of water in this fish room, well, just on this side, don't include this side, just on this side. And I do weekly water changes. I try to do uh, bi-weekly water changes, meaning twice a week and sometimes life gets in the way and I just can't get, to get around to doing it. That's a lot of water changes and a lot of this stuff. It's not sustainable. So I was looking for something a little cheaper, buying these every month or every two months for my situation, okay? So in your situation, you might have one tank and these will last you ages, in which case, go your hardest. But in my situation, I've had to change it up. I can't keep buying secret products, they're just too expensive for me. So I've changed what I use. And this is the bag. FKC, Fish Keeper's Choice. I thought I'd give it a go. I was hesitant because I've used Seagull products for so long. This stuff is hard to pass up. This is a five kilo bag, okay guys? Five kilo bag. I'm only purchasing one kilo of pH buffer and one kilo of Seagull Lake Salt. So one is to raise pH, the other is to make the water hard. So you need both of them in combination if you've got low pH out of your tap and soft water out of your tap. You need both those products. This product says that it buffers GH, KH and pH all into one product in a five kilo bag. The price, 50 bucks delivered off eBay. Now, <laughs> I'm not a scientist, obviously, I don't know the analytics of what is in this product. Seek and fully disclose all the minerals that they have in their products. This company does not. There's nothing on the bag that tells you what is in the product. It just says it detoxifies, it's a buffer for GH, KH and pH. It's a heavy metal reducer and an ammonia reducer. Four things in one. And it's got that in the bag, four in one. So this stuff is more granular than the Seekin products, and it tends to clump together more. It actually feels wet, it's not really dry, and especially compared to the Seekin products. Seekin products, the buffer can, the, sorry, the Cichlid Lake Salt can clump up a little bit, but this stuff really does clump up. And yeah, like I said, it is wet, a little bit wet, it's not completely dry. So that's why I'm keeping it in a bucket with the lid on. So in the water drums behind me, I'm putting 10 tablespoons in each drum per water change. So I'm using 20 tablespoons of that stuff every time I do a water change. With the Seekin products, I was using four to five tablespoons per drum. But uh, you need to use five tablespoons of the Riflake salt and five tablespoons of the buffer. So basically 10 tablespoons per drum again. So it kind of is the same, but this product's doing the one thing. I've noticed no difference in the running of the fish room. The fish are all doing fine. There's been no deaths. They're all still breeding. They're all st the babies are all fine. Colour is the same. And I just can't justify continuing to spend that amount of money on secret products when this seems to be doing the job. So, so far I've been happy with it. Now, when I add it to the water change water, it does stay, the water change water does stay a lot cloudier for a lot longer about two to three days. On the third day, it's pretty clear. The Seekin products are clear within a day, basically. There's no more cloudiness in the water. So, that's a couple of things that I've noticed with it. But yeah, the GH, 
the DKH is up and my pH is around 8.4. So basically the same as what it was with the C components. G'day guys, Future Jason just cutting in here because I've just realised that as I was editing the video that I didn't make mention of alternatives to say the Seacom products or the Fish Deepest Choice water additives to buff the water. So there are alternatives such as say Texas Holy Rock. You can pop in Texas Holy Rock into your tanks and they should increase the pH and the hardness of your water because of the material that the stone is made out of. Now, I personally don't like the look of Texas Holy Rock and that's why I don't use it. And because of that, I use buffers and cichlid salts to raise the pH and hardness of the water. I could, as an alternative for in my situation, put Texas Holy Rock in my sump, in where the return pumps are. I have a lot of space in there and I could potentially do that in the future, but I haven't done that. I have purchased the additives. One of the things I forgot to mention with the Fish Deepers Choice product was that because it is four products in one, and two of those products being an increase in pH and an increase in your water hardness, you can't independently change either of those parameters. If you add the Fish Keeper's Choice to your water change water, it's going to raise both your pH and your hardness, no matter what your water chemistry started off at. So if you already had high pH and soft water, it's going to increase that pH even further and make the water hard. With the Seacom products, because they're both independent products, you've got a buffer and a cichlid reflex salt to increase hardness, you can independently change those as you need. So if your tap water comes out of the tap at a high pH, but the water is soft, all you need to do is buy cichlid reflex salt to increase the hardness to what you require. So just bear that in mind with Fish Deeper's Choice. You won't be able to independently change in parameter if you purchase it. Also, if you're new to my channel, you might not be aware that I upload weekly videos every Tuesday at 7 a.m. Sydney time. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on my regular content. So guys, why don't you watch one of my other videos, like this one right here, which was my July 2020 fish room update tour, or this one right here, where it's my full fish room tour for 2020, and I'm running you through the entire fish room and every single fish I have in these tanks. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.